Hey guys, my name is Cody Hoffein. Have you ever asked the question, how do I get into wholesaling if I have a tight budget or no budget at all? Today we are gonna go in my truck, so hop in the truck with me and I'm gonna show you one of my favorite ways to get leads when you have no budget or a tight budget. So here we are in a key neighborhood right now that I love driving for dollars. This is one that I own some rentals in this neighborhood. And so it's a neighborhood that I know I'm very familiar with. I know the pricing of the neighborhood. So when I come across the, uh, a lead, I also know the numbers really, really quick. And so I really like to focus on those neighborhoods that I know really well so that when I'm driving for dollars, um, I, I'm really educated on what I'm doing. So. Here is a perfect example. So as we're going out, I'm gonna show you exactly step by step what it is I'm looking for when I'm driving for dollars. So you can see this home straight across the street. This is a perfect, perfect example of what this is, uh, what a drive for dollar lead looks like. Something that I wanna point out is you look at kind of like the yard, it looks like um, maybe like wood crates or the fencing, maybe? And maybe that's normal fencing, I don't know but you've got boarded up windows. So if you're looking really close, there's windows that are completely boarded up. This is also a violation. So there's a good chance that this is on the code violation list that you can get from your cities, but everything about that house is perfect. You've got broken down vehicles on the side. It looks like maybe a truck with no windshield, no windows, uh, it's rusted out that's behind that red truck. Um, so you can start to see how easy it is to kind of pinpoint some of these distressed properties, some of these uh, properties that we're really looking for. Now the main thing is guys, as you're going through neighborhoods, or I should say as you're just going through your day to day, and we're on a tight budget, and if you're on a budget that you have no money to, to really afford to do direct mail or Facebook ads or PPC or whatever your heart desires to find your leads, Drive for dollars ends up being a very affordable way, but you've gotta be cautious on what you're doing. So many times we just take the normal roads. We take the road that is like the freeways or the highways or the busy roads and we just go right and run our errands and we go right to the store or right to the gas station. I wanna challenge you to go do a different road. Go through neighborhoods as you go to the gas station. Go through neighborhoods to go through, uh, to get to, your, to run your errands. If you'll do that, you're gonna drive through neighborhoods just like this where on the way, so you're doing like killing, the, what do they say, two birds with one stone? That's the whole point, is being able to accomplish two things. Go run your errands, but also get some killer leads for you to start, to start working for your wholesale business. So this is a perfect example right here, but let's drive around and find a couple more examples of what would be a great, um, a great driving for dollars uh, a lead. So let's go through this neighborhood and you're gonna find out instantly that we're probably gonna have to pull over multiple times because this is a killer neighborhood. And I'll show you exactly step by step what it is we're looking for. So stick with me, let's keep going and let's uh, drive through this neighborhood now. Even this home, straightforward with the blue and brown, you got uh, missing uh, shingles on the roof, You've got the rain gutters look like they're starting to sag and drip. So we're lo really looking for deferred maintenance. So that's another thing you're looking for. It's not just the boarded up windows, but at some point that roof's gonna fail and maybe that homeowner, and this is just a, we're not really saying that this particular homeowner, but these homeowners sometimes come to a point where like, I don't have the money to fix this roof up. I don't have the money to fix the rain gutters. So this deferred maintenance starts to really add up and it can make it a really, really motivated uh, uh, seller call you saying, hey, I'm ready to sell my house because there's so much distress going on and they don't have the money to fix it up. So let's keep going through this neighborhood and uh, this really is a prime neighborhood for this. I'm, I'm certain we'll continue to keep finding some things here. So let's look here. Looks like this guy's getting a new roof. This one, not so much that it's uh, not so much that it's distressed looking. It looks like it's been painted and updated on the outside. But there are some things about this that intrigue me. You've got a fence over here that is just like plywood, so it's really not even a fence. You've got the driveway over here. Um, 
it's got like weeds growing through it and it's growing super tall so it just looks vacant even though the home doesn't look too bad it does have some signs of distress that I'm looking at and, and mainly this driveway is, is a good sign of, of some of this distress so let's keep uh, let's keep driving through here and let's see what we can find I'll tell you when you go through these neighborhoods if you have a team so I, I know I've talked about if this is something that you're tight on a budget or maybe don't have a budget how you can drive for dollars and it's a good way to find leads also if you have a team in place driving for dollars continues to be one of our favorite lists so I don't want you to just think that this is something while well, you have a tight budget no this is something you should do even when your budget's good and strong and healthy um, the reason I say that is when your acquisition managers I have two acquisition managers um, here is a perfect one by the way but I have two acquisition managers on the team and I have them on every single appointment, every single appointment. I have them uh, go out 30 minutes early before every appointment and I have them drive the neighborhoods, specifically doing what we're doing right here on this video so they can get the, the driving for dollars leads, right? Looking for distressed properties. And then they'll write those properties down, right? They'll write down the address, get it done and just make sure they write the address, um, the street, the address, and then they'll send it over to my assistant who will do two things. She will send out a postcard. So we do have a third party mailer do our postcards and that's something we have them do. Uh, we also have uh, her run it through like a skip tracing company so we can get the name of the person and the phone number and we'll actually call them. So not only would someone like this get a postcard from us, but they will also um, get um, a phone call from us, cold calling and making sure that uh, we're doing everything we can to get a hold of these owners. So this home is a, a perfect example. In fact, there's a big old dumpster on the side of the house. It could be that an investor has already bought this home, but it's still worth sending out and making sure we do everything we can to, to see if it is gonna be a lead. Um, let's go through here a couple more just so you can get a good, good, good feel for it. Now, also I wanna pinpoint some of this stuff. In this neighborhood, you also have nice homes, so that's the other thing. If every home is a distressed uh, property, that's still an okay neighborhood to go through, but what's really nice is when you have some nice comparables, some nice homes that are fixed up, looking good, that's also a good sign. That's also really nice to have a neighborhood that has some fixed up homes so that you are also adding value to that neighborhood. So when you sell it to, when you sell that contract to another investor, it's something that's super nice because you're you're doing kind of two things. You're helping someone out of the situation, but you're also helping that neighborhood sharpen up and, and, and just look better in general. So let's uh, let's go through here. Let's see what would be a good direction to go. It looks like there's already a, a good amount of activity going on. We have a guy here doing yard care cleanup. Really some nice homes. Another thing just to keep you, another tip here that we did right out of the gates and it actually worked, it worked well, uh, is actually just going up and knocking on the door. So that's another thing you can do here. It's crazy, you might think, but it's okay, we're crazy people. But you can go up to these, you can go up to these homes and actually knock on the door. So here's a perfect example. Look how distressed this looks. Get ready, this one's gold. So if we go over to this side over here, we have a broken living room window, it's cracked. We've got garbage in the driveway. It could be that a rehabber already has this one too, because I've seen all of the I've seen all the cabinets out here on the on the driveway. But that's a perfect deal. I mean it looks like the and you can see the garage door is slanted. So the garage door is even broken. Um, windows are cracked. The roof looks in not great condition. You've got shingles that are lifting. You've got missing shingles in the middle of the roof. You've got a swamp cooler that I can promise you does not work anymore. That's not looking great. Um, so there's a lot of good things here when we're, when we're talking about this home. That would be a perfect candidate to jot down the address and then send them a postcard as well as 
skip trace it if you're if you're able to and you have a company that or someone that can can help you out with that but a skip tracing company and get the phone number and call them directly and see if they would entertain uh, a cash offer or entertain selling their home but this is a perfect perfect distressed property that uh, there's a good chance you can find a motivated seller that lives in this home or at least owns this home so that's another thing to think of as you're as you're doing this but um, Getting back to knocking on the doors, what you could do is you could simply knock on these doors and the conversation shouldn't look like where you're going to them and asking them to sell their home. If you're gonna go on the on the do door knocking, make sure you knock a few homes to each side of the house that you really want. But the conversation should look more like, hey, I'm in the neighborhood, I like to buy some homes in this neighborhood, I'm looking to buy a couple homes in this neighborhood, and just wanna see if you know of anyone looking to sell in this neighborhood. So that's something key. Remember, it's not it's not asking them, "Hey, I'm here and I want to buy your home." Sometimes they if they're especially if they're on like a notice of default list or they've been behind on taxes or they've been behind on mortgage and you knock on their door, sometimes they think that you're just targeting them because you know they're on these lists. And so you want to be open. Make sure that you do it the right way. Don't call them and say, "Hey," or don't knock on their door and say, "Hey, I just want to buy your home. Are you looking to sell?" Go up there with an open mind saying, I'm in the neighborhood, I'm looking to buy a couple homes in this neighborhood. Do you know of anyone that's uh, that might be considering selling their home at this time? And if he is motivated and interested in selling, he'll actually tell you now with a more of an open uh, way to talk to you, say, yeah, in fact, I'm looking to sell my home. What do you want? What, do you, what are you looking to buy a home for? And so it starts the, the actual conversation. So make sure you do it right. If you're gonna go knock doors, don't ask them if they wanna sell their house ask if they know of homes in the area that are looking to sell. And that's a key tip for you. Okay guys, so in this video, you've learned some key things. First and foremost, take the long road. You don't need to take the fast freeways and highways to get to your errands, to go out and go like get to the gas station or store. Take the long road, go through the neighborhoods. When you're in those neighborhoods, make sure you're looking for deferred maintenance, meaning the roof's falling off, the yard looks distressed, boarded up windows, whatever it may be, look for those distressed properties. Now, once you've found them, you need to do one of two things, and that is simply get their address and send them a postcard, or, or you can skip trace them and call them direct. Now, I guess there's a third, if you really have courage, you can definitely go out and knock on that door right then. But from here, that is gonna give you some leads on a tight, tight budget where you can just simply drum up your own leads right now and get into wholesaling and start making a difference to get your first deal. Now, what I wanna know is at the bottom when you start commenting on this, I want you to comment and let me know, are you gonna be skip tracing? Are you gonna be sending the postcard? Or are you gonna get the courage and actually go and knock on that door and ask if they're willing to sell their home? Comment down below and then also hit that subscribe button. It's crucial you hit that subscribe button so that you can also be alerted when we upload new videos. So make sure you hit that bell and I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.